Hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Now today I'm going to be doing a video that I want, have wanted to do for quite a long time and that is to finally put to rest the argument that different programs print differently and the colours are rendered in a different way when you print say from Photoshop to Lightroom and if you print from Capture One to Photolab say or you use a RIP software like Mirage like we sell here at Photospeed. So what I've done is I've printed off all these prints you can see on the table here and they are of one picture. The picture is actually from Julian Baird um, and one of his pictures here. I've printed them all on A3 plus so you can see and also I've used the Photospeed Platinum Gloss Art Fiber for all of them as well. Now I've also used a custom profile as well, the same profile in each program with no color management being applied by the printer so it's nice and fair. Also I used relative color metric as the rendering intent on all of these so keeping things as neutral as possible and the printer I used was the Epson P700. So before we dive into how these prints look, a little bit of housekeeping. So don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel and also don't forget to sign up to the Photospeed newsletter on photospeed.com. I'll put a little link below so you can go there and do that straight after this video. And also don't forget to download the Photospeed Art of Printing, which is the free ebook from us here at Photospeed, explaining everything from turning your printer on right through color management, the framing, mounting, bookmaking, and absolutely everything in between. And don't forget that is free. So go on photospeed.com. Again, I'll put a link in the bottom here so you can go on there and download it for free. Okay, that's the housekeeping out of the way. And here are the prints on the table. So I've explained kind of how I printed them and kept it as uniform as I possibly could with a custom profile on the same printer, the P700. Also the same picture by Julian Baird on each one. Now, there was a little bit of a strange thing happening with one of the little pieces of software, but I will explain that, which is these pictures over to the side here of me. And there are some very slight differences. When I was first laying the, these out on the table, some of them are quite contrasty and some of them are a little bit flatter. This is the print from Photoshop. Now, it looks great. Looks how it does on the screen, to be honest. Um, hopefully, Julian's watching this and thinking I haven't messed anything up too much. However, it does look great. It looks great on the Platinum Gloss Art Fiber as well. Um, Julian's a photographer that you can probably print anything on and it just still looks fabulous, to be honest. Um, but this particular done holds all the nice shade and all the lovely details for it. Now, what I was particularly looking at was probably the sand color. So, and also this blue in here and this gray in the sky, because I kind of know that's a bit important for, for Julian here. Now, if I compare this to the Lightroom version here. So let me just move these out of the way a little bit so you can see it a little bit clearer with a little bit of white to kind of set it off for you. Immediately what I notice is it, it looks a tiny little bit flatter, like a little bit of contrast has gone. I couldn't really explain this because as, as far as I was under the impression that basically the print engines are pretty much the same, they go through the same piece of data or the code and they are printed out and they should look pretty much the same. And this is the one that quite surprised me, to be honest. But even if I hold them up to myself here, they, there's a very, very slight difference, possibly in the blue here as well, and just in the green of the grass here. Now, I don't know if you can see that as I hold them up. It is so slight though, that I don't think anyone would ever notice, you would only notice if you put them side by side like this. The green here, the blues here and things, I mean, hopefully you can kind of see on the camera up here that it's very, very, very slight. Now the next piece of software I looked at was Capture One, because I know there's a few Capture One users out there. And again, very, very similar results. I've got the Photoshop version at the top and Capture One at the bottom here. I would probably say that there's a little bit more vibrancy possibly in the Photoshop file. It's so slight that I don't think, it's just a little bit of warmth perhaps, I'm not too sure. I don't know, again, could it possibly be the lighting? 
in here. I'll try and keep everything as neutral as possible. Um, but there might be something bouncing around, perhaps on the background or something. If I put them side by side like this, it is so marginal. I mean, I've stared at these for about an hour trying to prepare for this video. So I can possibly see things that my eyes are trying to fill in and tr playing tricks on me, to be honest. However, it is so slight, I'd probably say they do really print the same. Um, if we go back to the Lightroom and Photoshop here, so I'll put Lightroom in the middle and then Photoshop here. Again, the C does look a little bit flatter here than Photoshop and it's just a little bit warmer. I don't know why. Um, same rendering intent, like I said, same profile, um, just how that profile is applied basically within the software. Now, the really interesting one though, apart from Photoshop catching me out like this, was when I started to print through an alternate option for editing software and has been named as the Lightroom killer in some magazines and things that I've read or online articles, and that is DxO's Photolab 7. Now I've talked a little bit about this in kind of terms of color space and what you can see on the screen versus what comes out of the printer and such. So I'm just gonna put the Capture One and Lightroom just to the side for a minute and I'm gonna bring in the two, I did two prints, because as you can probably see, this is the Photolab 7 one at the bottom here. Now as you can see that basically it has got a lot more warmth, intensity and vibrance to the print. I mean especially the C almost looks like it's over kind of done a little bit, lots of contrast, lots of warmth going on in here. Um, this is the Photoshop one I've got on my left here. And as you can see, there's, there's quite a bit more muted in the grasses here. I mean, the sand's a completely different color. It's got a lot more warmth in and it's kind of an orangey red in these grasses here. So I went back into Photolab and had a look at what was being applied to it in terms of adjustments. Now DxO um, have, a, have a default set that you can edit of adjustments that are applied automatically. And that's what was happening basically. Um, I didn't notice it on the screen, but when I printed it, it was quite obvious what was going on. I went through and turned all these off basically, so we could get a pretty neutral print. And this is what this one here is. These files were JPEGs, so Julian has edited these. I would say it's almost, if I compare it to say a Capture One picture here, it's almost a little bit muted in the sense that we've lost a little bit of the orange. Um, again, same profile, same printer, absolutely everything, same paper. The sand is possibly a little bit more lifelike, a slightly better color rendition, possibly a little bit more lifelike. Now, I thought on my screen, and Julian, please correct me, that the, the Photolab 7 print, although it's a little bit more muted, we've got a little bit more muted kind of C in here as well, was a little bit of a closer match to the screen. Now, the real test is the next print I did, which is basically a a RIP software called Mirage. Now I've done a whole video on Mirage. I'll put a link up somewhere up here for you so you can have a look. Now it's just a print program. You do your layouts, you assign profiles, you set up paper types, you do all that kind of thing. There's no editing facility or very crude one at that. I don't recommend using it. Now all you do is click print and it comes out of the printer. So if I just pop these to one side for a second, I'm just gonna put those over there so we can compare in a second. So the other print I've got here is from Mirage. Now, again, this is probably a foolproof way of testing because it's got no other funny business going on, but it does show that perhaps with Photolab, it is a little bit on the flat side and maybe we do need one of those little sliders being put in to affect possibly the intensity and things. However, these files are printed straight out of Lightroom with no adjustments um, from Julian's edit on this JPEG. So it just shows that actually, I think what Photolab is actually doing is almost bringing it back to that, not quite raw because there's still other adjustments like gradients and things going on perhaps, but it does bring it back a little bit more neutral 
So then we probably have to re-edit it in Photolab. So it's something to be aware of when you are printing through Photolab. But if you edit through Photolab from the start, I know Julian uses Lightroom, so, it, so the workflow is a little bit mixed up here. But if you use Photolab 7 from the start, you should be absolutely fine. We shouldn't see this muted look. And there is an argument that because of DxO's large white or wide color space, they call it, you should get better, res closer results. Now I'm gonna do a whole video on that as well. I've kind of done a video explaining it, but I really do wanna put it to the test and see if we can get that closer match. Now, Mirage has probably given the closest print. However, it is a couple of hundred pound piece of software um, on top of your Photoshop subscription, your Capture One subscription, or your buying Photolab. So we kind of expect that it would. And there's a lot more functionality that you can do within the software. And there's also a lot of trouble you can get in as well. So I don't recommend people trying to play about with it too much. But if you want to learn a little bit more, watch that video I linked to later. I'll put a description below as well. Now, all the prints look absolutely fantastic, to be honest. Um, and I'd be happy with any of them. Some of them have got a little bit more orange in them and some of them have got a, a little bit more muted palette in here. I think we'd be happy with any of them. Um, I'd say perhaps the photo lab one needs a little bit more sharpening, perhaps there isn't really a lot going on in there because that's all been taken out. Whereas with the Photoshop Lightroom pictures, because they've been edited in Adobe, I suspect that it transfers it all across. The one I would probably like and pick um, is possibly the Lightroom one because it's just in between. The Mirage does give a really nice look and is probably the closest match to the screen, to be honest. However, is my screen calibration the same as Julian's, etc.? So there's always this kind of gray area that we're always trying to guess. I would like this one perhaps, or maybe this one, where Julian might pick this one because it's closer to his vision. And I think that's, that's the, what it comes down to really. Lightroom Photoshop is probably the widest used. Now I do know there's like Affinity and Photoshop Elements and things like that, and also On One and such. So I haven't really tested them all, but hopefully kind of gives you an idea, at least four of the softwares kind of gives you an idea of if there really is any difference. It's probably not been the most exciting video I've done. However, I think it needed to be done because I do get asked a lot of questions about this. Is there any difference between Photoshop, Lightroom and things like that? If I'm printed through Capture One, will I get the same results in Photoshop, etc.? So hopefully that has kind of answered a few of those questions and more than likely kind of raised a few more as well. So uh, put them in the comments if you have, because it is an interesting kind of rabbit hole I've probably opened and need to go down a little bit further. So don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel. And also don't forget to sign up to the Photospeed newsletter on photospeed.com. Now we release new videos every Thursday on the Photospeed YouTube channel at 4 p.m. So make sure you're subscribed and you've got that bell icon ticked so you never miss a video from us. So until next week, bye-bye.